Fusion 5.0 has just dropped and it comes with a bunch of new free features that we're gonna talk about later in this video, but the big breaking news is the optional add-on for speed ramping and advanced keyframing. Now, those two features will set you back an additional $19.99 on top of the standard LumaFusion price for the original build out of the app, but is it worth it? We're about to find out together. I'm gonna show you how speed ramping and keyframing works. And then at the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on everything that's new in LumaFusion 5.0. Let's dive right in. Now, if you don't know what speed ramping is, here is an example of it. It's when you change the speed of a clip over time, and it's a very gradual change as opposed to an abrupt change. So here is my timeline in LumaFusion. You can see that I have this beautiful drone shot dropped in my timeline. Because I do a lot of corporate video work in my business, I don't really have a ton of use for really funky speed ramping, but I do love to apply it to a long drone shot. I definitely think it adds something and it's a great opportunity for me personally to use the speed ramping features in the different apps that I edit in. Now you should know that this clip was shot at 60 frames per second, but my timeline is 24. Now let's speed ramp this clip. So I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to select this stopwatch icon here at the bottom of the screen. Let's just take a quick tour of this window. I can scrub through my clip by grabbing this little playhead and pushing back and forth. And now on the right side of the screen, you'll see this slider where I can control the speed and some additional information about my setup, which is the same as what I just told you. My clip is about 60 frames per second on a 24 frame per second project. So right now my speed is at 1.00, which means it's at the natural speed of the clip in this 24 frame per second timeline. But if I wanted to speed it up, I could grab this little puck here, slide it all the way and go six times, or I could bring it way down and have it be super slow. But what I want you to focus on is these little hash marks here. What this indicates is how much I can decrease the speed before the shot looks choppy. Now the placement of these marks is going to depend entirely on the frame rate in which your clip was shot and the frame rate of the project you are editing in. So because my frame rate for my project is lower than the frame rate in which this clip was shot, I can really slow this down to 40% and have the playback look super smooth. See how slow this is? but it still looks fantastic. And I'm right at that hash mark. That's as slow as I can go. I'm gonna pause that and bring this down slower so you can see the playback, see how it stutters. So I do love that they're giving you this indicator about how slow you can go. So you can see that if you think you're gonna wanna slow your B-roll shots down in post-production, you're going to want to pre-plan and shoot them at a higher frame rate. Definitely takes some foresight. Now, if you're in a pinch and you really wanna slow something down that you shot in the same frame rate in which you're editing your project, you might wanna hop on over to another app like Final Cut Cut Pro, the Mac version of Final Cut Pro, not the iPad version, just dropped a few months ago, this really cool feature called Smooth Slow-Mo, where it uses a machine learning model to slow your clips way down and have them look flawless so you don't get this herky-jerky move that you would see in an app that doesn't have that feature like this one here, LumaFusion. Now let's talk about the speed ramping, which if you remember is the idea of changing the speed over time. So now we can add keyframes and change our speed. So what my idea would be for this clip, just looking at it, is I want the clip to play really fast at the beginning and then slow down as we get to this beautiful ocean view. So what I'm going to do here is crank up my speed really high. Let's go three times. Then I'm going to drag my playhead to maybe about here where we really start to see the ocean. And now is where I wanna start slowing down my shot. So I'm gonna hit this button here to add a keyframe. Then I'm going to move my playhead down a little bit further in my timeline. And I'm going to bring that speed down to that 40% mark. So what this means is that my clip is going to play really fast at the beginning. And then between my two keyframes, it's going to slow down and reveal this beautiful ocean view. If I wanted to add other keyframes, I could do that by hitting this plus button. If I wanted to move a keyframe, I could just long press on the keyframe and I get this new menu where I can nudge my keyframes frame by frame using these single arrows 
or I can jump 10 full frames by using the double arrow buttons. And if I wanted to delete this keyframe, I just select it and hit this X button here. So that's how you change the speed over time on a clip in LumaFusion 5.0, but you can also go further and change the easing of the movement between these two keyframes we just created. So I'm going to hit this button here at the top center of the screen, and now we get this expanded keyframe editor. And you can see by the shape of my line here between my two keyframes that the speed change is kind of gradual, and then it gets a little bit more steep here in terms of the slope, and then it kind of evens out again. So we can see that reflected when we play back. It's almost like going down a roller coaster hill. But we can actually fine tune this more by using these purple and green sliders here. If I cute my playhead between these two keyframes, you can see one half of the keyframe editor is highlighted in green and the other half is highlighted in purple. I'm gonna grab the puck on the green slider and slide back and forth to show you how this changes the timing of my ease. So now if I play that back, you can see what's going to happen. The speed change is gonna start gradually and then it's really gonna drop like a roller coaster. Let me cute my playhead between those two points again. And I'm gonna bring the purple puck toward the left. And now I get this more exaggerated S curve. Let's play that back. Generally speaking, in today's editing trends, the kind of motion that an S-curve like this in your keyframe editor creates is a very popular look. If we want it to be more exaggerated, I could grab that keyframe and drag it. Now in my purple and green sliders, if I bring them all the way to the left, it's going to be a sudden change in speed which is a look that I personally really like if I'm cutting a video to a great cut of music and I want a dramatic speed change on a very specific beat. I like to have abrupt speed changes in my video clips personally. So I do like that you have this option. And I just wanna draw your attention to the fact that if we hit this button here in the top right of our screen, there are some preset easing options that LumaFusion provides. I'm gonna select Summit and let's arrow back to our timeline and we can see that that change is reflected in our timeline. So the clip plays back slow, speeds way up, and slows back down. So those are the features you unlock if you spring for the new optional speed ramping add-on in LumaFusion. And I am gonna give you my thoughts on these new features at the end of this video. But first, I just wanna run through really quick what's free and new for every LumaFusion user with this new update. The first new features are some new overlays in your playback windows. So if you hit this button here and turn on overlays, you'll see you now have the option to have title safeguards around your frame. And inside this box here is where all your text should land when you're adding it on top of your clips in LumaFusion. This one here is action safe, which means that any superimposed logos or other superimposed images should fall within this outside box. And the next one is this horizon line that you can use a slider to dial up and down if you're trying to line things up at a certain point in your frame. This is kind of cool. I'm always in favor of more overlays on every playback window. I just think it helps when you're adding graphics to your videos. Another new feature is that you can now resize your windows when you're working in the effects editor. You're gonna wanna look for this teeny tiny horizontal little T-shaped icon here in the corner of your windows. Grab that and pull and now you can expand and contract, and I love this. This is something that I feel like was really missing in LumaFusion. Let's go back to the main timeline here, and I have good news for you, lefties. You can now change your effects window to be more functional if you're left-handed. So you're just gonna wanna hit this icon here and switch to this selection on the bottom right. And then let's open up that effects window, and now all of my effects are on the left side of the screen. So if you prefer this configuration, I think you're gonna like that. And there's one other update in LumaFusion 5.0 that everyone's gonna love. They did some work inside the app to make exports faster for everyone, so we love that. So what do I think about these new features in LumaFusion 5.0? I do like them, but they're not perfect. Let me show you what I noticed. So here is another project in LumaFusion. And unlike the one I just showed you, this one is not a singular shot. It's actually, you know, someone talking and then I've got these B-roll shots over it. I've got a music cut that I've timed out perfectly. But again, I have another drone shot that I want to retime. 
So I'm gonna double click on it to open it up and I'm going to select the speed and reverse option here. And the first thing I noticed, and you probably noticed, is that my LUT, my color correction, went away, which is weird because if I click any of these other options in the effects editor, the color correction stays. It's just on the speed and reverse option that it disappears. I don't think I've ever noticed that before in LumaFusion before this update. You guys tell me down in the comments, is this a normal thing? I kind of have a feeling this is like a small bug that they're going to fix. So we're just gonna ignore that. So unfortunately this clip was shot in about 24 frames. So I don't have a lot of flexibility to slow it down, but I am gonna crank up the speed all the way. Let's add a keyframe and then move my playhead down add another keyframe and slow this video down to 100%. Let me just play this back and let's see how it looks. It's fast and then it slows way down. And of course I can play with the easing here. If I so chose, I'll give myself that really nice S curve, you know I love. But here's the hitch. I'm gonna go back to my timeline. Look at what it's done in my timeline, it has created this gap, which is to be expected, right? I'm shortening the duration of my clip, but this just really highlights for me one of the biggest shortcomings of LumaFusion, which is that its UI design is not the best because you're constantly having to reopen new windows to change almost anything about your clips. And sometimes that's fine if you're just scaling something up or something like that, but the problem is, when I'm trying to change the speed of a clip, I can't see in the speed timing window how it's affecting the rest of my timeline on the whole. I'm really flying blind here. I cannot see how the changes I'm making in this window are affecting the rest of my timeline. And if I wanted to time a speed change to a cut of music or something like that, it would be back and forth trial and error for Ever. So to me, this is a huge drawback of the speed ramping feature in LumaFusion. I just think it's just poorly designed in that regard. And just to drive home that point, here's a shot of what it looks like to speed ramp in my primary editing app, which is the Final Cut Pro Mac app. You can see I can speed ramp and clearly see how it's affecting the rest of my timeline. And also this is a shot of changing the clip speed in the Final Cut Pro for iPad app. Again, I can do it in my main timeline. However, the Final Cut Pro for iPad app doesn't have the speed ramping ability. So you can only have one constant speed throughout your clip. But it is nice that I can at least see what I'm doing when I'm retiming clips in the Final Cut Pro for iPad app. But what I do like about this LumaFusion speed ramping design is this keyframe editor. I give this an A plus. This is excellent keyframing capability. In fact, LumaFusion has better keyframing capability than the Final Cut Pro Mac app and of course the Final Cut Pro for iPad app. So this for me is like stellar. I just wish this kind of information was available to me here in this window. And I don't think that's a problem that LumaFusion is going to be able to solve easily. And I'm not a developer, I don't know anything about anything, but it seems to me that the fundamental base of LumaFusion doesn't allow for this type of workflow that I'm looking for. It would really take an overhaul of the app to be able to achieve that. As far as the free updates with LumaFusion 5, I am definitely a fan of these overlays. I always am gonna be in favor of more guides for adding overlays to your clips. Obviously being able to resize your panes in the effects editor is awesome. Who doesn't love that? But I do think there could be an improvement when it comes to flipping this effects editor. If I wanted to take these effects and bring them to the left side of my screen, I can't do it in this window, which makes me crazy. I have to arrow back to the main timeline and then swap that out. And I just think that's inconvenient because if I'm going to be affecting the effects editor layout, why can't I do it in the effects editor window? It doesn't really make sense to me. So those are my thoughts on LumaFusion 5.0. I'm dying to hear, do you think it's worth the additional add-on cost for the new speed ramping feature? And what do you think of this business model where you can opt in or not to purchase extra features in LumaFusion as opposed to let's say like Final Cut Pro for iPad where it's only $5 a month but they're constantly upgrading it. 
and adding new features to it. Do you prefer this model where you don't have to pay anything unless you're interested in that feature? I'm dying to hear from you. Drop me a comment and let me know. I read all your comments. They always brighten my day. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. Here's some other videos I know you're gonna love. I'll see you again.